Well, hello, friends. Welcome to uh, Real Truth Real Quick. I am here today, Todd Wagner, with my friend Scott Kadersh. I usually get to be the one answering some of the questions, but we brought a subject matter expert. We'll tell you more about Merge Ministries and Scott's role in that and leading it, but let's dive right into the questions, Scotty. We're glad you're here. We want to know how much would you recommend, as a guy who spends all kinds of time with engaged couples, how much is too much to spend on a wedding? All right, so, so looked at the little research before coming in here, Todd. The average amount spent on a wedding on the day that we are shooting this video is $26,645. Hello. Yeah, a lot of money. And I, and I, you and I have both been at weddings where it's been a, a whole lot more than that. Yes. And it, it's just the, the pressure to throw a great wedding is intense. Pinterest is around, and that has spiraled out people's thoughts into just what a wedding day really is. And so, hey, there, before you even worry about, like, how much should I spend on my wedding, you want to think through, why are we getting married and, and what's the purpose of marriage? What's the purpose of our wedding day? Hmm. And so we want to be more thoughtful of that before we even answer this question. And so okay, we believe, so purpose of the wedding day, go for it. Yeah, the purpose is to show a picture uh, of just who we are as a couple. And uh, uh, the marriage is a picture of God's love for us as a church. We want to display the gospel to the world. And so we want to say this is a, a covenant relationship between a man and a woman that we are yoking ourselves together. We're becoming one flesh with each other for as long as we both shall live. It's a picture of how much God loves us that he gives us this gift of marriage. And so before you worry about this, you want to know why are we getting married and then what's the purpose of our wedding day? Perfect. So principle number one, make sure you spend more time worrying about fulfilling the picture of what God's purpose is for a marriage than you do the pictures that you're going to have from your wedding, That's right? Because right? everybody That's right. wants that perfect scene and all the, the best photography in the world, and we better focus on the, the right picture yeah. and not the temporary one. All right, what yeah, else you got? The, the picture ought to be good. You know, my, my wedding day was one of the greatest days of my life. We celebrated, we laughed, we just had an amazing time with friends and family. And so, you know, Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a, there's a time to celebrate, a time to laugh, a time to dance. And if there's ever a time that you want to do that, hopefully your wedding day is that. And so the decisions that you make should be based on the fact that it's a celebration. And so we want to tell you to, to be intentional about your wedding. At the same time, we'd say, don't be conformed to the pattern of the world. Paul says that in, in Romans 12 too, and the world's going to put a whole lot of pressure on you to impress, to have the best cake, the best food, the best uh, flowers, the, the best looking people. We spend so much money uh, on making this day special, and, and often couples even forget or spend so little time preparing for the marriage. The wedding is one day. Yeah. The marriage is, is for the rest of your life. So principle number two might be to not overdo your emphasis on the societal phenomena, which is a wedding ceremony, right? A wedding is uh, what you enter into in order to fulfill the divine uh, institution, which is the marriage. And we see again and again, people make all kinds of mistakes, is that they emphasize on the societal phenomena. We rehearse every word we're gonna see at a wedding. And we speak a lot of careless words in our marriage, right? We, we, right. we spend a lot of money putting a, a precious jewel on a woman's finger, and we don't treat our wives as precious possessions right there on our, our own hand. And so whatever you spend on a wedding, okay, um, make sure that you spend more time focusing on the marriage. But, boy, you haven't given us a number, and the reason you haven't probably is because there isn't a number in the Bible, right? That's right. Not that I know of. But there are principles. Yeah. You and I both see this, that uh, we can't think of any scenario where going into debt uh, to have a great wedding makes any sense as you move towards a great marriage, no, <laughs> right? No. Any words you'd give to couples on that? Don't go into debt for Don't your wedding. Don't go into debt <laughs> yeah. for your wedding. Yeah. Right, and I would say, man, make sure that you focus on the marriage. And one of the ways to do that is through this thing called merge. Talk a little bit about merge real quick. Yeah, so merge is our effort to help prepare couples for marriage. And so we get couples who are seriously dating and engaged. We want to help them make the best next decision in their relationship. And so if you're seriously dating, you're thinking about getting engaged, merge is an incredible, safe, authentic, Christ-centered place for you to think about whether or not you should put a ring on her finger. Yep. And then if you're engaged, it's an incredible place to be informed, equipped, get a mentor to speak into your relationship to help you fine tune. And again, to help you make sure that the moving towards marriage from engagement is the best decision that you can make. So invest in that, invest in preparation, invest in what's gonna be in the marriage much more than you concern yourself with what's gonna look great on Pinterest. That's right. Yep, yeah. Yeah. excellent. The, the, the greatest cost, you know, is, is not what you spend on flowers or cake or dinner. The greatest cost, honestly, is that if you make this decision flippantly. The cost and wasted expense is not in what happens on the wedding day, but the misery that you might be stuck in for the rest of your life. And so before you worry about a dollar sign, I'd worry much more about who 
you're choosing to yoke yourself with in marriage for the rest of your life together. Would you ever go so far as say it's sinful if you spend beyond a certain amount? I don't think there's a right answer. The Bible doesn't give us that answer. And so what's sinful for one family and couple might not be sinful for another. Exactly. And so process that decision together as a couple with your parents, with your in-laws, with community. And, you know, and make wise decisions. There's no set number. The Bible doesn't tell us what we should or should not spend. You and I have both been to weddings where an extravagant amount of money has been spent and it wasn't at all glorifying. We've been to others that couldn't have been more simple. And we go, that was one of the sweetest, most memorable weddings we've ever been a part. And frankly, I bet you if we did a study, not talking about weddings that were done impulsively without much thought, those are just as dangerous as ones that are the height of every kind of wedding planner's efforts and big money, right? Uh, that they don't always work well. What we see is when couples love Christ and love each other and make that the focus, yeah. what they spend in the wedding is never the problem. That's right. Right? But we do see people getting in a lot of trouble because they spend more time focusing on the day more than they do what the day is supposed to lead us into, huh? Yeah. My, so my friends, John and Pam, best marriage I know of, the guy I've learned more about marriage from that, than anyone else. Their, their, their wedding day was nuts, was punch in the middle of Fellowship Hall. And they're, they're doing pretty well, I'd say, you know, and they didn't spend the amount of money that we see so many couples spend. And so yeah. choose wisely, make sure that you're making this decision in the context of community, and, and enjoy being married to each other. Celebrate, cool. rejoice. Hey, go. if you want to know more about Merge, go to dallasmarriage.org. If you're in another town, you want to know how to bring this incredible ministry to your church, also go to that website. You can find out how to get a hold of those folks and dive in to preparing for your marriage more than you do being consumed and focused on your wedding day. So don't blow it out there. The bottom line is get the purpose right, much more than worry about what the bottom line comes to. All right, thanks for jumping in with us and uh, join us next time on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.